the, the sister asked, what advice you give to someone who wants to introduce um, uh, the issue of hijab to their child? And you know, with all the problems in society and all these role models that don't wear hijab in the right way and all these, all these issues. So how do, you, how do you introduce the idea? So the answer is a very big answer. You know, sometimes we ask a question and uh, there are so much introductions that we have to give to it because it comes down to the whole, I mean, the way to answer that question is the same way how I'd introduce the idea of salah to the child, the prayer, how I'd introduce the idea of growing a beard, how I'd introduce the idea of Islam to the child because of the society in which we live in. So there's many things to do. The first thing would be that um, the child should not have access to TV or internet or phone at all in any way, shape, or form. Because children are like sponges, okay? How many hijabis would a, would a girl see in her day-to-day -day life? Maybe her mom, maybe her grandma, maybe her auntie. But if she's on internet and she's on TV, she's, what, what is normal for her? For her, my mom is abnormal. Because she's the only one who wears hijab. And what's normal? What's normal for me? What's normal for the girl? It's all the little girls that she sees on all these uh, TV channels. What are the TV channels that kids watch? They still watch Disney Channel? Is that a thing nowadays? Nickelodeon? Kids still watch that stuff? So they, they're seeing whoever, Hannah Montana on, on Disney or whatever have you. So for her, Hannah Montana is normal. Does that make sense? I believe, Wallahi, and I know this is going to sound really tough to any parents that might be here, yeah? It's going to sound really tough, yeah? Parents who give their children access to TV and access to the phone and access to the internet I believe they are terrible parents I believe they, I believe those parents are destroyed Wallahi 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 it is one of the worst things you could do for your child and Wallahi you'll be questioned about it on the day of judgment Wallahi, that parent will be questioned to the bone. I'm telling you now. I mean, you guys know yourself. The kind of madness you get up to on Instagram and Snapchat. And then you're going to give it to your child? A'udhu billah. A'udhu billah min shaytan rajim. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't punish that person. And parents will like they don't listen and they do it due to their own selfish reasons. They do it due to their own selfish reasons because they say the child is, um, is, a, is a pain. So in order to distract the child, I have to put TV on for the child. In order to distract the child, I have to give the child a phone. Wallahi, for centuries, women were taking care of their kids and they never had no phones and they never had this. This is a responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to you as a parent. If they were doing it for hundreds of years, what's the difference between them and you now? Your primary role as a parent is that child. It's even more important for you to take care of that child than to do other things in the house. It's the most important thing as a child. So for you to have free time, for you, for your own selfish reasons, you will give the child a phone. Because of the phone, the child starts to listen to music. The moment music gets into your system, it's game over. Because of your... Wallahi, do you know these cartoons? I watched a uh, documentary and it showed how they have subliminal messages in the cartoons. How they have subliminal messages in the cartoons. The way they draw certain things is like certain private parts inside the character. So the child subconscious picks it up. We were just discussing it yesterday. Who's ever seen the Powerpuff Girls? Who's seen the power of girls? You know him? Him, remember him? You guys never seen the power of girls? Him, him, him. The red devil guy. No, the mojo, that was mojo, Jojo. Him is the, uh, him is the, the, him is the guy that looks like a woman. Do you know what I'm talking about? The devil. He's basically, he's, 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 he's a transvestite. Did you guys never think about that? Did you, never, did you never question to yourself when you were watching Powerpuff Girls as a child that this guy, it's a man, but he's wearing high heels. He's dressed like, he's, he's, actually, he's actually dressed, I read that they actually made him to look like a prostitute. 
Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Why are you talking amongst yourselves, sisters? Please, I'm speaking. <coughs> so, why are they putting that in a child's cartoon? That was before. Remember, remember now, are you hearing the news now? Oh, you know, children are getting uh, sex changes at the age of seven, eight. Have you heard about this? Children are coming to school and saying, teacher, don't call me boy, call me girl. Have you not heard about this? This happened now, but for the last 10, 15 years, they were showing them Powerpuff Girls. They were making it okay for them. Have you seen the beginning with the Powerpuff Girls, where they have the rainbow colors? What's that? Is that not a flag of what? The LGBT community. The lesbian, gay, transsexual, bisexual community. Do they have that? Wallahi, the children are being destroyed, wallahi, man. Because they're being taught from a young age all these things. They're being taught these things from a young age. And then you wonder why your child is feminine, wallahi. Because we've been watching him. For him, it was normal to see a man. And remember, him is made as like an evil, like, character who's taken over the world and he's, he's, he's strong, he's got powers, right? So for him, it's like, right, I can be a tranny and still be strong. That's just one example of many, wallahi. Parents wonder why their children are talking back to them. They wonder why their children talk back to them. It's because you're showing them all these shows that the kids are disrespecting their parents. And then you wonder why it happens. So that's one of many. I mean, this discussion is very big, you know. Uh, parenting in Islam. In fact, there's a book that we have at home. I was thinking it would be good for it to be taught one day. Maybe we can start ask Ustad Abdul Rahman or someone to teach it. Which is 40 hadith pertaining to how to raise a child. Uh, from the Prophet 40 hadith. No, it might be good to do, inshallah. But I would say the most important thing is to ensure that that child has no access to media. You know Ustad Abdul Rahman? Put your hand up if you know Ustad Abdul Rahman. He's our teacher. His children are for me and say Allah and Barik. They are the purest kids. They have access to nothing. They just play with themselves and they have such a pure, like, fun and upbringing. And you know what? Now the kids started seeking knowledge at the age of four, man. Four. And they've already memorized this whole book. They're memorizing the Quran, they speak fluent Arabic. It's because their minds have not been corrupted. Their minds have not been corrupted. Memorizing Quran, memorizing poetry, memorizing hadith, speaking Arabic, al Surah Thalath, they memorized it. Poetry is in Tajweed, they memorized it, Allah and Barik. It's because their minds are pure, they haven't been corrupted. Does that make sense? Assalamu alaikum, guys. We believe that everyone should have access to the obligatory things that they need to know, the obligatory knowledge that they need to know in order to be a Muslim on and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to at least a basic level. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Talab al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslimin. Seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every single Muslim. In other words, it means if you're not seeking that obligatory knowledge that you need, that minimum knowledge that you need, then you and I could actually be sinning. In fact, we would be sinners by not, by not seeking that knowledge. But alhamdulillah, in order to solve that problem, we put together something called the Knowledge College. The Knowledge College is an online Islamic studies institute where we teach you how to study your religion. Brothers and sisters, you can start studying it right now by going to the link below, checking out the website, and hopefully if you like what you see, you can register inshallah ta'ala and start your pursuit of seeking knowledge. We start on a basic level and then alhamdulillah, we work our way up to the top. Let's do that together inshallah. Check out the link below, Knowledge College. See you there. Assalamu alaikum.